Hi all, welcome back. So today we're going to see that how can we create custom activity using UiPath Studio. Previously we have seen that how can we do that using Visual Studio. So for UiPath Studio, the prerequisite is the UiPath Studio that you need to have the UiPath Studio installed on your system. So this is what the UiPath Studio looks like. And for creating custom activity, you need to select the library because it's written in the description that it creates reusable component and publish them together as a library so that it can be used across various projects. So because I have already created a library, you will just have to select it and type in a name. I've done that. So here is this test activity demo library already created for us. So since many of you have requested to showcase something, some custom activity related to PDF or Excel, like reading the rows or reading the number of pages. So today we're going to see that how can we read the number of pages in a PDF? How can we build a custom activity out of it so that it could be reused? So first of all, I'll read a text file, which is a PDF file basically. So this is the part of the file. So I'll read this. I'll save the content in a string type variable. So it's file. And now to read the number of pages in a PDF. Okay, it's already defined. Cool. So I'll just you know type in file. And now I'll be using regular expression to count the number of pages. And so it is this is match and match. These are the two activities for the using of for using regular expressions so is matches returns a boolean variable that whether the pattern you are searching has been found or not and matches returns the collection that on what all collection on what all data this your pattern has been matched so input so we'll have to input our file which we have just read so it's file and then we'll have to pass in the regular expression. So I'll write in the regular expression and then I'll explain that what does it really mean. So I'll type in type that is it has to exactly match this backslash type in your string. I don't know if it's backslash or forward slash. I get confused. And now this S is for white space character. And I'm going to add a star. That is, it could be zero or more white space character. Then I'll write page. That is, you'll have to find the pages, the pages in the PDF, like page one, page two, page three, like this. And this is for excluding, that you want to exclude something, and then S. And now this thing will result a collection in which this pattern has been matched. So I'll create a collection which is pages, which is basically number of pages. And then if I want to have the count of the number of pages, then that simply means that I have to count the number of collection, the count of the collection, which would be num pages dot count so this will return me an integer value which i'll have to convert to string so that it is displayed in a message box and now to show that why have i used the regular expression i'm also going to display the file which is the which is basically the text and i'm going to click on run and we'll see how it behaves so you could see here the output so it's like type, then pages two, then type, then pages, then type, then pages. So this is basically how the reading of the PDF works. And so that's why counting this thing would return us the number of pages in a PDF. Now I'm just going to click on OK. And here we see that there are 10 pages. Now we're going to see that how can we make this reusable so that anyone and everyone could use it. So we'll have to define arguments instead of hard coding the values. So the first argument which you need is the file path. The path of the file of which you want to count the pages of. And the second one is you're going to return to the user the count of the pages. So while naming the arguments, uh, make sure 
give meaningful variable names uh, following the casings that you follow camel case and all of that. So, and you add annotation so that it's clear to the user what they have to enter. So like in all UiPath activities, you see that when you hover over them, you get to see the annotations. And so it is clear to you that it's gonna, what does it require? What does, what will it return? So uh, you write requires file path. Page, page count you want. Try to write the annotation more comprehensible so that it very well indicates what is the need of this, what will the variable need and what will the variable return. So this count of PDF would be out direction because this is what you're gonna return to the user and just right click, add annotation to it also. Try following all this that you mentioned that it's an out argument. I to mention that it will return a string or an integer. So string, or you can even mention integer. And then return the, and try always, try always make this a habit to do exceptional, exception handling so that if there's any exception in the code, the user gets to know about it. Return the number. You can even make it int, you just have to change the data type. So here you will add int so file path. This. And then no need of this thing. And no need of this thing. You just have to assign. Assign the page count to your out variable or Count of PDF. The collection. What's the name of the collection? It's num pages. Num pages dot count. If you want to return the integer, then you will just have to not you don't have to convert it to string, you will just simply return it. Now remove all the unnecessary variables, if any, in your scope. Try to put this in try catch and handle an exception and in an out argument or an in out variable return the exception if there is any now uh, this is how the custom activity is made it's pretty easy than if you go by doing from visual studio but if you're doing any complex thing then obviously there's no option left to you other than to use the visual studio but for simpler things you can use uipad studio and now let's publish this and we'll get our nuget package so i'll go on publish And I'll publish it. I'll just see where am I publishing it. I've already showcased in a lot of videos that how can you add a new get package so that you could use it as an activity. So over here in my activities, I'm gonna paste it. And I'll click on publish. there you go it's published now so let's just click or we have already copied so there's no use we'll open another process to use it to see if it's working fine or not so we cannot open a library to test the library we'll, we'll have to open a process so i'm opening our already created process just to check if it's working fine or not Okay, so here we are. We're gonna first see that whether we have that package already in place or not. So we'll go into settings. So we already have here the same path in which our package is. So we just have to go to my activity and we could see this test activity demo. It's just been created. We'll install it. We'll click on save. So it's installed now. We could see here in the dependency that it's installed. Now we'll go to the activities and we search uh, so this new activity we could even give it a very meaningful name it's not you you shouldn't just write a new activity i forgot to change the name so whatever name you give it to your xaml that 
would be your activity name and whatever name you give to your library so it's like this so this would be your library name app integration and underneath this would be your xaml name so like that it goes so web would be your act library name and then http request would be your xaml name inside the library so we forgot to change but no worries we will see how it functions so we'll just drag in the new activity and we'll have to provide it a path so i provided a path and then so we'll create a variable to store the number of pages and result we'll drop in a message box to see whether it is correct or not and result it's already string so we need not to convert and then we click on run to see what's the output so until that time this is my linkedin page if you want to follow me you can go and send your request and you can also drop in your queries if any so we have got the output so you just have to click on okay it's six we just verify it whether it's correct or not we'll see what's the output what's the path we've provided so this is the path we have provided we go searching so this is it so we could see that it's six so that means that our activity has performed as expected so like this you can make any of your reusable component libraries or custom activity and you can reuse it you can even publish them on connect on marketplace of ui pass i'll quickly show in the next video that how you can do that so like this you can create any of the activity or any of the piece of code which you think is reusable you can create it you can use it for internal use you can even make it public publish them on connect that is the ui pass marketplace if you have any query you can drop it in the comment section below or you can connect to me over linkedin thanks for watching the video please don't forget to like share and subscribe